Hey everyone, welcome back. So this series on SQL would not be complete until we talked about the infamous technique called SQL injection. So for those of you who are unfamiliar, SQL injection is basically a technique where you, as a malicious hacker, can take advantage of insecure SQL statements in a database in order to execute whatever code you want to execute. You can alter tables, drop tables, create new tables, whatever you want to do. And we'll see how we can do that if we're not careful about how we execute our SQL statements. So first, here's our student data. We see we have these seven students. Now let's say that we have some online form where some administrator can update the GPA of a student and uh, as long as you have the name of the student. So we have, write this function called update student GPA, which takes in two arguments, the name of a student and the new GPA of the student. And the function is pretty simple. It just executes this script. It says update the students table and set the GPA as the new GPA if the name is equal to the provided name. So the intention is that if I put in some student like Luke, and I put in the new GPA of student Luke, then inside here it'll say, find the records where the name is Luke, and set the GPA as the new GPA. Seems pretty innocent, right? And seems like it'll do what we want. First, let's make sure it's working. So if I execute this, and I execute update student GPA, notice that Luke's GPA before was 3.0, and I ran the statement, if I select everything from students again, we successfully updated Luke's GPA to 3.3. So the function does work as intended, but let's see how someone who's malicious can use this to basically wreak havoc on our table. So let's say instead of playing by the rules and putting in the name of a student and the GPA of the student, I set the first argument as Luke, semicolon, and then drop table students, semicolon. So what is that gonna do? To get a better idea, let me print out the statement in here. So if we do, oops, if we do print, So if I print out the statement that's going to run up there, and then I execute this statement, this is the statement that just got executed. So we do update students, set GPA equals zero, since that's just what I put in here, where name is equal to Luke. So the first thing that it does is it sets Luke's GPA to zero. So, I mean, that sucks for him, but it's not doing anything to our other students. But the semicolon in SQL, remember, basically uh, separates one statement from the next. So that statement is over. The next thing it ran is drop table students, because that's what I put in here. So if you notice that this whole argument I put in for the name, so that gets placed right here, basically, at the end of the statement. So at the end of the statement, I basically say, terminate this current statement, and then the next thing you're going to run is drop table students. And did it actually work? So if I try to select everything from students now, I get this no such table students. My students table is completely gone. This malicious hacker was successfully able to drop my entire students table without my knowledge. This is obviously something that we don't want, right? We don't want SQL injection to be allowed. So how do we protect against it? What's a better way? The first thing I'm going to need to do is regenerate the students table. Okay, I'm back and I just regenerated the student data. So let's look at a safer way to go about this. It turns out the library we're using in Python, the SQLite 3 library, uh, gives a built-in way to kind of protect against SQL injection. So we're basically, we're going to rewrite this update student data function to be safer. So we're going to have our statement say, again, update students and set the GPA of the student to something where the name is something. Except here, instead of these percent %s's, so notice what we're doing up here is basically just creating a Python string that's going to get executed as a statement. That's not safe because Python doesn't really know anything about SQL injection, how to protect against SQL attacks. But using the library itself, we can do that. So by putting these question marks, these are basically called placeholders and they're going to be able to take in the two arguments that were provided to this function. Now the other change we make is instead of just using the plain old execute script, which doesn't have any safety checks built in, we use this execute many uh, function in the cursor. This does have safety checks built in. So this execute many takes in two arguments, takes in the statement you want to execute, and a list of the arguments that should get filled in for the placeholders. Now this execute many statement is safer in that it knows to take this GPA and name and put them explicitly into here, put them explicitly into these question marks. And so even if I put drop something in my name or GPA, it's not going to execute that because that it treats that entire thing as a whole string. So it just says that, okay, that's a weird statement. It says drop table students, but I'm basically wrapping that in string in quotation marks so that it's not going to get executed. So I'm going to run that new function. Let's make sure it still works for 
the original use case. So if I update Luke's GPA to 3.4, we get Luke has an updated GPA. And now here's the test. We'll see if we put the same statement. We put in Luke semicolon drop table students. Let's see if we protect it or did not protect against it. So if I run that statement, moment of truth, and the table is still there. So it looks like Luke's GPA is still 3.4, and more importantly, everybody is still intact. It did not affect it. So make sure to protect against SQL injection. In this case, it's using the execute many function. And the official name for this technique is called using parameterized queries, which basically is a fancy way of saying use a query, which has some placeholders or parameters, which you fill in later, and which SQL can um, basically cast to strings rather than running the ex exact statement that was written. So again, make sure you use parameterized queries when using SQL to protect against these really bad SQL injection attacks. All right, so until next time.